All right, so in the last video, we walked through doing an ice box and solving for a problem that had a weak acid. And we were able to make a really cool assumption that made the math really easy. And that was that there was a um, very small dissociation, therefore our x value um, was very small. So we can kind of just ignore that in our denominator term. That denominator term was the one that was corresponding to our initial weak acid. Now what I want to do is do that same kind of context, but instead this time with a weak base. So you're going to see a lot of deja vu here. Um, so I might go through some parts a little bit quicker. So here what I do is I have, again, two beakers that are showing uh, two different basic solutions. Um, the very first one is going to be a strong solution, uh, a strong base of NaOH. So I see right here I have a lot of OH ions, OH being um, these species that have the um, uh, black circle and the little white dot. Over here as my weak base, I see much less. Um, I see that it's really focused just on uh, having just these solid Bs, which are just going to be my original base. Um, so that's why this is going to be a weak base, because it's not going to dissociate, it's not going to form a bunch of hydroxides. Similarly, if we think of the um, type of equation that we will have for a weak base. So in terms of the equation we'll have, we'll have, in this case, B minus instead of HA, because it's just a base. And then it's going to accept a proton from uh, water, and that's going to make it a BH plus. That right there is going to be the conjugate acid. So I have my base and my conjugate acid here. And then OH minus my hydroxide ion is going to be my, my other product. If I write my KC for this, I'm going to follow everything the exact same, where I'm going to be products. So my conjugate acid and my hydroxide divided by my original base. And again, water is going to be ignored. And this now is going to be called KB instead of KA. Um, KB because it's a base. Um, in um, a little bit, I'll show you the um, relationship between Ka, Kb, and Kw. Um, just to kind of make sure that we're all agree on the, the one thing, um, I have a table again showing a bunch of uh, concentrations of hydroxide and hydronium that's formed um, with a base. This is going to be pyridine. We start with zero, which will then be equal, and then we'll show um, these where we then increase the amount of our base, and we see that all of these will now have a larger amount of uh, hydroxide, therefore it's going to be a basic solution. So if we think back to model 11 up above where we have the picture, we had our conjugate acid look like this, where it had our box, and then it had a little circle. Um, and it, just kind of pictorially thinking about this, we have our initial box, which is our base. And then we have water, which was, you know, a colored in black circle and, and two. And then what happens is this base is a proton acceptor. So this proton here was given over to my base. And this is an equilibrium. And that makes it into this base circle plus my colored in species. The, uh, empty. So that's going to be my hydroxide and then my uh, BH+. Plus. So the way in which this was formed was unlike in the previous ones where we saw our acid losing one, and here our base is going to accept one from water. So we're going to see this right here, and this is our, our proton transfer. Um, and that's going to be kind of how this, this actually occurred. Now we know similarly and I won't walk through all these, we know that Kw is going to be our concentration of our hydronium times concentration of our, our base. We walk through and we can check all those there, and we see that all of them uh, will still go to our 1 times 10 to the minus uh, 14th. Um, that's all going to be the same. That that will be a, a, a constant value. Uh, so that there's nothing, nothing crazy there. We follow the exact same as um, the... Um, or, or the weak acid case. Also, if we calculate, we see that again, uh, it's a constant, it's the same. So both of those are kind of a yes, nice and easy. 
So now let's walk through an example, same as we did last time. So here we have pyridine and we have water. And in this case, um, we know that our water is going to lose a proton to go to a hydroxide. And then our pyridine is going to gain one. Now, uh, the actual structure of pyridine, in case you're curious, is a five membered ring uh, with a nitrogen header atom. Uh, and that's going to, we have nitrogen and then we have uh, five sp2 hybridized carbons, uh, each with one proton. Um, so when this accepts a proton, it actually accepts the proton right there on the nitrogen. And it comes C5H5 and H plus. If you needed to, if you didn't know that, you could just look down at the table to, to see that. So to write a, a expression for KB, this is going to be the exact same as always. We're going to do concentration of our hydroxide times concentration of our, in this case, conjugate acid now. H plus divided by our original base, our pyridine. And that right there is going to be our equilibrium expression. Um, RKB. Now, if we want to build an ice box, we'll follow all you know the exact same steps here. Um, nothing crazy. Everything's going to follow the exact same type of setup as we had here. We had our initial minus x because that's going to be our our reactant, which is going to be consumed. Initially, none of our reactants are there. They're a one to one stoic. So, um, for each each, if we can think back up to our pictorial. Uh, oops, sorry. Struggling for a second. Really struggling. All right, sorry. So if we if we come back to where we were up here with our question fifty six, where we see each time that we're going to form an HB plus, um, we also must form an OH minus. Those two are going to be tied together because this is just a single proton transfer. So when we think uh, to our ice box, these are both going to be plus x, and they're, they'll have the same value. Um, so now the next step that we typically do when we're solving an ice box is going to be writing our KB expression. So we know that KB is going to be um, our value of x times x over 0 0.3 minus x. And they tell us our KB value here as 1.7 times 10 to the minus 9th. So if I kind of simplify this a little bit, I get to x squared 0 0.3 minus x equals 1.7 times 10 to the minus 9th. And typically, this is when it becomes a math problem. And we would then have to do the quadratic. Now, you can do the quadratic if you love math and you really want to. Um, we're still, though, I'm going to say let's make an assumption down here. And let's go ahead and assume that x is much, much less than 0 0.3. We're going to say this is a weak base. One of the reasons I'm going to say it's a weak base is because I see I have a really small kb. This is 10 to the minus 9th. So that, that makes sense, right? That I have a small kb, therefore I should have a small x. Because a small kb means my my products are going to be, or my numerator is going to be pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and make that assumption and that's going to simplify this down to x squared over 0 0.3 is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 9th. And that's effectively just dropping this minus x term. Now, this is the only x term I changed. The, the numerator of x squared stays the exact same. So now when I go through and I solve this, I take that 0 0.3, multiply that to the other side, square root it. And I say that x is going to be equal to 2.26 times 10 to the minus 5. And now a really big important thing to check now is this verification. Calculate my percent dissociation and make sure I didn't mess up. Make sure that assumption is valid. My percent dissociation is less than five. So I know percent dissociation is gonna be equal X times my base initial. So that will be 2.26 times 10 to the minus fifth over 0 0.3 times 100%, and then that gives me a percent dissociation of 0.0075%. And that right there is definitely less than 5%. So that means my assumption was valid. That, that trick I did where I highlighted it here in blue, where I assumed 
that x was really, really small, therefore 0 0.3 minus x equals 0 0.3, um, to, which was what I used to get this term right here, um, was valid. So if I come back to my icebox and then kind of finish filling it in, 2.26 times 10 to the minus 5, 2.26 times 10 to the minus 5, and then 0 0.3. And we're going to write just 0 0.3, because if you take 0 0.3 minus 2.26 times 10 to the minus 5, you're going to get 0 0.29999 something, uh, and it's effectively 0 0.3. So now let's calculate your pH, and that's now an interesting, because I'm asking for pH. Um, now, X right here is not concentration of hydronium. X right here is concentration of, of hydroxide. So that right there is concentration of hydroxide. So the first thing we'll do is we'll calculate pOH, because I have that term. So pOH equals negative log of 2.26 times 10 to the minus fifth. And I run that through a calculator, and I get 4.65. And then I know that my pH is going to be 14 minus my pOH. And 14 minus 4.65 gives me 9.35. That's going to be my pH. Um, and that right there is my, my value of x. So those are kind of the two big things to solve for. Uh, another way you can do that is you can also, if you want to solve for the pH a different way, you could take that term and then you could, uh, you know that concentration of hydronium and hydroxide multiplied together equals your kW, 1 times 10 uh, to the minus 14th, and then you can solve it that way. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you, you get the same thing. Uh, now, I do want to go in just because we kind of skipped to this in the last video. Um, here's just a table, which is showing all the different terms. And one of the, the key things that we'll see is the concentration of your, um, your products. So your hydroxide, and in this case, your, your conjugate acid, are going to be the same. So if we needed to fill in this table, um, I'm going to say right here, my concentration of my base at the end is going to be the same because I see that this number and this number are always the same because we're assuming low percent dissociation as are these two. So 2.3 times 10 to the minus fifth would be what I would predict without having to do any math because they gave me a bunch of other examples. Um, so explain why our concentration of pyridine is equal to the concentration of pyridine at equilibrium. So the question is why is my, my base, my pyridine, the same at the beginning and at the end? And it's because our x is very small. So the percent dissociation is low. So you do something like 0 0.3 minus, uh, is, what is the number? Is 2.26 times 10 to the minus fifth. That's going to give you 0. Uh, 2999 something, which is approximately 0 0.3. So that's why we're able to make that assumption. And then why does the concentration of hydroxide equal the concentration of your pyridine? And that's just because of our, our stoic. We have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. And that one-to-one -one stoichiometry um, is going to mean for each hydroxide that gets formed, I'm also going to have to form a uh, one of my conjugate acids, my my protonated pyridine. Um, and that was something that we kind of explained up above. So I think now, I hope at least, some of these ice boxes are starting to get a little bit easier because we don't have to deal with the math. We're going to fill in some of our initial constraints, and those are almost always going to look the same. We're going to have a number, 0, 0, minus x, plus x, plus x. We're going to plug that into our k term, whether it be ka or kb. And then if and only if our... Ka or Kb is a really small number, we can make that assumption that this denominator is just going to get rid of that x term and then solve that. If you do make that assumption, you need to make sure you calculate your percent dissociation to prove that it's valid. And then often at the end, you'll calculate pH or pOH. Um, so <clears throat> that's where we'll end this video. In the next one, I have just some general trends. And that actually wraps up everything that we'll have for um, the very first set of homework that's going to be on uh, the Cengage OWL system. Uh, so until next time, have a good one.